the way and Douglas podcasting off the beautiful shores of the Pacific Ocean. We had hail today. You know, interesting. I was in my garage and I saw white stuff falling. I thought I was back home in Connecticut, but you know, it was it was out here. Um, it was it was nuts. Um, but it rained really hard, and then also I, and Vegas got their snow today. So you know. A little crazy weather out here in January. Uh, my partner is James Amato. He is podcasting on the beautiful shores of the Atlantic Ocean. James, how are you doing today? I am doing good. We're prepping for one of our East Coast New England snowstorms tomorrow, which means it'll it'll snow. It'll be freezing rain. Oh yeah, it'll so snow nice. again. It'll be freezing rain. We'll get like four inches. Uh, people who don't know how to drive will decide to drive tomorrow yeah. and be all over the side of the road and. I was <laughs> ruined my commute to work. <laughs> exactly. I was I was telling somebody just recently about the the crazy ice storm we had on the Halloween ice storm we had like years ago where you couldn't do anything. That's the that's the scariest I've ever been during a storm. That was bad. Driving and listening to trees fall all night long. That was nuts. That was crazy. That was crazy. Um thanks thanks for those who are listening to us in San Diego, California, Centennial, uh, Colorado, uh, Fredericks Fredericksburg, Virginia, Black Heath, England. Newburgh, New York, Santa Ana, California, and Anchorage, Alaska are listening to the Put On Waivers podcast. Um, let's just, get, I'm, we'll get the AFC game out of the way <laughs> real quick because it really wasn't much of a game. No, uh, it, wasn't. It, it, it really wasn't. So um, obviously they played at a, a tempo and a speed that the Bills couldn't handle. Um, I, 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 th- I thought it was pretty clear from the outset. Um, I thought maybe when they had that muff punt, um, maybe they would have been able. Um, is there was there a reason? What's the rule? Because why you can't advance a muff punt? Is it was there a reason why you can't advance that? I know you can't. I know you can't advance it, but is there a reason why? Yeah, um, no, I can't think of. I can't think of a reason why. <laughs> yeah, I can't think. I don't know why. That's <laughs> it's like really weird. Like you can do all this stuff, but you can't advance a muff punt. A muff punt. But um, McCole Hartman had that early in the game. Um, you know, ten nothing. But let's, you know, they were down twenty one nothing last year to the to doing Sean Watson and the Texans. So that wasn't that was that wasn't a problem at all. Um, what are your thoughts about uh, the Bills? You know, they're obviously not ready for prime time just yet, but the Chiefs. After not playing great football for you know weeks, but they were still winning, they they ended up blowing that team out. Yeah, and I think you would have to agree that was the Chiefs we saw last year and, and probably the year before uh, for the first time all season. That's the best they've looked all season, you know. And I don't want—I mean, again, they were fifteen and one, but there, a lot of those games were so close. Um, this was the first time where, yeah, they spotted a team, you know, a lead this time. You know, not really double digits, um, but yeah. They, they came out and, and they shut them down, you know, like they had a mission. Um, it's probably the worst the Bills have looked in the second half of the season. I mean, the Bills are playing some incredible football those last eight games. So, um, you know, just, just a tough loss for the Bills. And, yeah, maybe some of that AFC championship, you know, jitters got to them. Um, it's the third one in a row for the Chiefs. So, they you know, they're, they're well-versed in that. But Buffalo's got a, got a bright future. You know, Allen was – up and down yesterday when he was good he was really good but when he was bad uh you know he just didn't look bad you know didn't look good at all so um thought the game would have been a lot closer it obviously wasn't but that's you know that's the best we've seen the Chiefs probably since the second half of last Super Bowl it kind of reminded me of Kobe Kobe and Shaq's Lakers in a lot of ways where they just, where they just all of a sudden they just put the hammer, they would, they would just kind of go through the re- regular season. And then when they had to put the hammer down on somebody, they were able to do it. And they were able to do that. I mean, listen, Kelsey is going to, Kelsey, because he has a quarterback who's only 25 years old. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not dissing Gronk. I'm not dissing, you know, Shannon Sharp or he's going to just, dest- he might just destroy every record out there for a tight end. Like, I mean, like, just, I mean, just out, just like, you know, touched, like, I don't, I don't even understand how this, this thing happens every week where you scheme all week to, to face Kelsey. And then like, he'll, he'll score a touchdown with nobody within 15 yards of him when they're in the red zone. Like that happens all the time. Yeah, every week. Way, way too much. <laughs> way, way, I mean, it happens all the time with him. At least Gronk is like mus- out muscling somebody when, in New England. Um, for those touchdowns, but he, he's going to have great numbers. He loves playing in Kansas city. Um, you know, he's a, you know, he's a, it's a, he's a, I mean, if he's not on your team, obviously you hate him, but I mean, as far as like just being a, just being a really good player, he's been a great player his whole career. And, um, you know, playing with Mahomes and 
I, it's just it's just nuts watching that team play. I mean, you just you can't even you can't you can't call it. They have no. And I think one of the most underrated spot of parts of this team, James, is Spagnolo on the defensive end. I think he has been able yeah. to. He has been. He knows how to forget the regular season. He knows how to navigate the run to the Super Bowl from a, yeah. from a, be, be, being a, being a really good defensive coordinator. Yeah, and, and and he's he's done it before. And again, he's you know he's the prototypical, you know, not head coach material, but definitely a, a coordinator material is his yeah. strong suit. You know, yeah. he, he didn't have success as a head coach, stepped right back in to that DC position, and uh, is is looking. You know, he he's got that team playing some some good defense and, and drawing up some schemes. So he knows how to shut those teams down. And it's nice to be a defensive coordinator where where you sit back and you say, "Hey, I just know that I got it. All I gotta do is score. Th- if I score thirty, I'm good. Like, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm, good. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna keep it. My, my, my offense is gonna score thirty. So all I gotta do is keep some keep, keep people in the twenties, and I'm good to go. So get um, at least two, three and outs a game, and you're all yeah. Set. That's it. And then Ty, Tyra Matthew is a guy who, you know, the numbers, the PFF. Sometimes, some, sometimes people, players go outside of that in that system. It, it, what he does, he's 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 phenomenal at it. He's a he's a menacing player. They have a menacing player at each level of, of of the defense, and I think I think that's one of the keys to their defense. Chris Jones up the middle, um, obviously obviously d- d- does a good job as well. But the Chiefs are well on their way. Um, you know, the fourteen and two, they could have easily. I mean, it's, it's hard to believe that you know my my team was one of the, one of the teams who actually beat them this year. <laughs> and that was yeah. that was that was nuts that 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 actually took place. But um, give them a lot of credit; they did a great job, and um, you know they're going to Super Bowl again. Um, they could have went to three straight if um, if D four stayed on stayed on stayed stayed on um, stayed, stayed out of the neutral zone. But um, they, they two in a row is fine for them, and then, and then let's just see if they can do back to back. So the meat and potatoes game now: um, Packers, Bucks. They have a long history, you know, with, back to with Favre and Warren Sapp and all that stuff like that. But starting off, I thought the most devastating play, and, and, and then there's a lot of plays in this game. People are going to go back and forth. But I thought the most devastating play, James, was the play in which they get the interception and you figure, okay, it's all shucks, you get an interception. Worst come the worst, you're going to get up three points. They go forward on fourth down. They get the fourth down to the four net. And then I'm not sure what Kevin King was doing. I, I, I don't know what Mike Patton was doing in that moment. But to get to have anybody get behind you, Scotty Miller is not this, like, quote, unquote, white receiver who is a possession guy. He's a deep threat. And <laughs> he, he hit by the numbers. He's one of their best deep threats. So I'm not sure what he was doing defensively, but – to score that touchdown before the half and making it 21-10 and instead of 17-10, that really was a big blow to the Packers in that in that game, James. Yeah, it's almost like the, you know, the Bucks fooled them to the point that they thought they were just gonna, you know, try to center the ball as close to the middle of yeah. the field to kick the yep. field goal and you know, just just pulled that out, you know, out of nowhere. And um, you know, maybe maybe it was Coach Brady who who's like, hey, we did this in New England a couple times with, with these trick last second plays um, before the half of a, of a playoff game, and, and let's uh-huh. see if we can pull something off here. So, uh, yeah, that, that's a, that's a hard one. That's a, that's a hard way to to end a quarter, especially when you're getting the ball back to start the second half. So they got the ball back, and then <laughs> they fumble it, short field. It's 28-10. So now you pretty much say what you want. At 28-10, you have to pretty much play perfect football the rest of the way. And they almost did it. And Aaron Rodgers was tremendous in that. I thought Aaron Rodgers played great that day, um, yesterday. I know what people are going to say about the last, the, the call itself. I feel like you, I feel like you, I feel like I, I, I could have gone either way with it. I thought that to me, you know, you set the text to me that was like perfect. You know, it's it's really a situation where you're sitting there saying they let them play all day and then they actually, you know, that, that was a curse. That was the curse yeah, of that's the curse right there. That was a curse right there. And then when the game was on the line, they actually let they actually let 
the officials, you know, do that, throw that flag and kind of destroy the game there, James. Yeah. And it comes down to also, and, and I, you know, I, I get this from, you know, having played basket played basketball years ago is when the refs let you play, you keep pushing, you know, you keep pushing that line in the sand and you keep getting away with it. You keep getting away with it. And then when it's so blatantly obvious, um, you know, at first I thought he tripped over his own feet. I was like, that's a bad flag, you know, yeah, yeah. especially now that's a really bad flag. Cause when you saw the first replay, it looked like he, he tripped and I think it took like three replays with the last angle where you really saw the pull on the shirt. Um, is it the right call? Yes, it's the right call, but you just let so much get away with holding arms, hacking at arms on Ooh. passes. Devontae, Devontae Adams was getting killed at, killed like yes. six, seven yards down the field. And, you know, yeah. the, 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 the interception before the half, that was a – that's a, that's pass interference. Yeah, it, like, it, 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 it happens all the time. It, and, you know, it, it's it's the cliche from the announcers that, oh, you know, this is great. The refs are letting them play. You just know that when they say that, there's going to be a, a call. And obviously not as controversial as – the, the Minnesota New Orleans one a few years ago. Yes. But still it's you know it's the right call, but you haven't been calling it all game. You 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 know you let them play, continue to let them play. And, and it was it was the same thing in basketball. You would you'd foul hard, you know, maybe go a little harder at someone because the refs were letting you get away with it. But then you just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And it's going to get to the part where like, okay, that's a little too much. We, we do have to call this. And then it reminds me, it, might, it literally reminded me of an umpire just giving somebody the low strike and low strike the whole game. And then the pitcher in the seventh, in the seventh inning is throwing the ball in that, in that same area, the whole game. And he's, and he's, and he's all of a sudden people are getting walked. It's like, dude, yeah. literally for six innings, that was the strike zone. So why are we changing the strike zone? Well, well yeah. And you, you think about like even the Braves during the heyday, and I know they, they you know, they threw a lot of complete games and, and pitched late, but the strike that Greg Maddox was getting, you know, yes. Mark Wollers wasn't getting. Yes. You know, and, and that's kind of the same thing. You know, you, you pick away at it and it's it's well, this is Greg Maddox. It's probably and it, and it's probably the same thing with Jerry Rice. You know, Jerry Rice they didn't call a lot of penalties against or it, you knew if, if it was a penalty against Jerry Rice, it was definitely pass interference because that's the only way they could stop him. Yeah. You no, know, but, exactly. but that's, that's where, where it's like, Hey, we call this one for Jerry Rice. We don't call it for the receivers because it's Jerry Rice. And I'm not yeah. putting him in that, in that category, but they let him, they, they just, they, they took it as far as they could. And then they crossed the line and then it's, it just, does, it does not look good, especially for all the people who believe the NFL is rigged. Um, yeah, that, that definitely, um, as far as, um, before we get to Rogers and that whole thing, I think the two, the two guys who, and listen, in the second half, Brady did everything he possibly could to give the Packers the NFC championship. He was, well, pretty, I mean, six points off of three turnovers, you know, that's bad. It's not good. That's, 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 not bad. Good. And that's not bad. I, honestly, and, and, you know, I posted it early. I, I, not rooting against Brady and I'm not rooting against Ronk. Um, and I, I wanted to see them win, but like, you know, e even as, you know, a, a, a Brady fan when he was with new England, those passes did not look good yesterday. Even some of the deep ones that were caught just seemed to like hang up in the air. Um, wow. Like, like flying ducks, like he had a rubber, you know, a rubber arm or something with some of those. And, the, the offensive players made some nice turnaround plays to, to bring them in, but some of those passes were just like dying quails. The one he threw to Jair Alexander on the sideline, I thought if, you know, cornerbacks do this all the time. I talk about all the time. They jump in the air for interceptions where they don't have to. I feel like if he could just, if he could just caught that one, cause that ball was just like a, a that was like a fair catch. He could have ran down the sidelines for a touchdown. Um, yeah. and I easily, and I thought that I was, I was probably the worst pick that Brady threw because just take the sack. Like, like, you know what I mean? That yeah. was the one where, that was one where the guy had a, had a free runner at the quarterback. It's like, just take the sack. And he, and he didn't even hit the quarterback. I, I think these, these guys got to find a, what to find out what they want to do because they are really, I see it with Brady. I see it with Mahomes. They're just, when they get around them, they're just scared to hit them. Like especially with Mahomes, they're like terrified to actually physically hit Mahomes. Well, and I mean, it's the rules. I mean, but you, you got to. I mean, you got to hit you him. You don't want to give up fifteen. You, you have to hit him. 
But you, you can't get to. too late in the game and give up 15 yards. Yeah, but you, yeah, because you never I, again. You never know. You never uh, know what they're going to call. We see sh- we see helmet to helmet on one play. We don't see it on the next play. Seriously, um, you know the offensive player can go helmet to helmet. The defensive player can't. It's 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 just crazy. I think that um, Shaq Barrett had a little um, Lawrence Taylor juice last night. Uh, he, yeah, <laughs> geez, we, he said that kid's a free agent as well. So um, good for him. He was Shaq Barrett, um, JPP. They have a really good Vita Vea coming back in the middle of that line, along with Adamic and Sue. That's where they're going to have to beat the Chiefs. I mean, they're going to have to beat the Chiefs there because I mean, because that that defensive line now filled yes. out. With Vita Vea there, um, really makes them a uh, really makes them a really formidable team to to mess with. And then we all know, like you know, going back to the Giants and the Patriots, you know, they were able to really simply get pressure on the quarterback without having the blitz. And if you can do that, you're good to go. As far as you, you you're good to go. I mean, I mean that gives you the best chance because you got their their receivers going against your your um the rest of your um guys in the secondary so as far yeah, as yeah you far, just as can't as give goes. Mahomes time to run around in, in in the back and it's just difficult he's he's it's, he's he's a pain in the neck it's just a yeah. pain he's a pain in the neck he's a pain in the neck as far as that goes um Rogers after the game this is what the male soap opera of sports personified is <laughs> he's under contract um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe he wants to go somewhere. Maybe he, maybe he's had enough. I think the one thing I would say about the whole thing with him is he must look around and say, you know what Brady asked, whatever Brady asked for, he got in Tampa Bay, whatever, um, you know, Breeze got Breeze wanted in, in New Orleans, he got it. Like, you know, as far as the help the offense, and one of the and you saw all these receivers uh, in the NFL draft this year, and one and what was one of the most talented NFL drafts in history. Look what Justin Jefferson did. Look what you know T Higgins has some good has some good games. I mean, you know, it, 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 we, seriously. I mean, j- just somebody who, who can complement Devontae Adams, they could have easily gotten that. Like it just seems like he's always just carrying everything on his shoulders with that team and they shouldn't have to. I mean, they could have, they really could have kind of bolstered that offensive unit in the off season. Now they end up getting to the NFC, the NFC championship game. So it's, you know, you can say whatever you want. And again, they probably should have won, but do you think that it's, do you feel like that is just him saying, him just trying to give them a hard off season? Or do you feel like that's, this is really him expressing that he's not going to come back or, or he's going to try to force his way out? I, I think the frustration just built up, you know, he, um, he, he took that team to a height um, that no one was expecting from them from this year, you know, and, and I think he just really, really felt it like at the end, like he, he was really despondent. You know, we, we've heard Ben in the past talk about, I don't know about the future, but it was Ben and you knew Ben just walked he always does the that. time. He always does that. Um, Rogers, it, it, it just seemed a little different. It, you know, um, a little more heartfelt. I didn't like how once again, he threw the coach under the bus more or less. Um, was it my decision with the, it wasn't my decision, you know, quote, um, you know, he did try to make it sound good. Like I understand why, but it wasn't my decision. But um, it was his decision to not run when he had a clear path to the, to, to the right pile. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, I, and I still think, I, I think their biggest mistake was going for, I think they went for two too early in that game. Whew. this is this is yeah. where you and I are, are on the same length I'm going yeah. you, you know where I'm going to go where I'm going to go for two point conversions is in the fourth quarter when you need it like anything exactly. before the fourth That's... quarter I'm not doing it what are you what are you chasing points for yeah because then they're down by seven on that last drive you know and, and does that change them oh dramatically you know, oh yeah you know, dramatically because then you know you know, you made, with the kick in that field goal, you made a, a two score game at that point. You know, um, if you score, you don't get to two. Obviously, the same amount of time is on the clock, and you're you're going to go with the, the three timeouts situation. And so, how much is how much does it like 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 Marino and like some of the great quarterbacks of all time? 
How much does it bother him that that two point conversion he threw it right in the kid's chest? Even though it got a little tipped a little he bit, did. but he, it's uh, much, you, you, it was tipped. Oh my two god! Hands, <laughs> two catch hands and ball. your chest on that ball. You, you, you have to catch that. You got to catch uh, that ball. You cannot do that. That is hard. That's but, horrible. Yeah, but is he gonna? You know, I don't know if he's gonna be a Green Bay next year. I can't say. I, I you know. So the one thing that Mike Greenberg said um, that Greeny said on his show get up was when they draft the heir apparent usually the guy who's been the standard standard bearer ends up leaving at some point like if they draft that guy the, the you you the, the team ends up eventually moving on um the patriots did it kind of reverse they ended up trading <laughs> trading yeah. the guy well i mean a, i mean you know aaron Rodgers when he was drafted it was a different cba you know, so are you yeah. are you really going to sit this guy for three years and, and lose three years of contract control? Yeah, exactly. So you're already in two. So you have th- basically, and the guy wasn't, he was so, I mean, no, no disrespect, but I mean, Jordan Love was so bad that um, <laughs> that he wasn't even the backup quarterback on this team this year. Yeah. Like, but like he, he, he was, I mean, so if you're going to look, I'm saying if he goes somewhere else and and does anything spectacular, gets a Super Bowl or whatever, and you and you're and you're worried about and Jordan Love turns out to be, you know, anything but. And how, and how could you know if he's going to be great or not? You you have no idea what, what Jordan Love is going to be. Jordan Love doesn't know what he's going to be. No, exactly, <laughs> like, exactly. I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, but sitting three years the way Rogers had three years behind Favre just just isn't the option. Um, it was three. It was that. Packers. It was three years. He was three years behind. Wow. Her. So, and time. again, it was a different CBA. So you didn't have that five-year window. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, Fournette, I thought was a, an, a, another unsung hero for the, for the, for the Buccaneers. Um, he is, he's definitely played well. It's too bad that he, he struggles so much to catch the ball out of the backfield. If he ever had got some hands, he'd be yeah. really, he'd be really special. He did, he did yeah. catch. Um, probably, you know, probably their second best free agent signing. Yes. After yes. Brady. I mean, he, you know, he just fell into their I just, lap. And... Yeah. I just wish that, it, I mean, if they didn't have a B, that this team would be so likable. <laughs> it would, they really yeah. would be, they really would. They have a brash head coach. They have Brady. Um, they have some, I mean, good for, I, and I, I tell you what, another play that I absolutely was fell in love with was I've never seen a team run the clock out on a play like they did with Chris Godwin. That was yeah. a tremendous call. That is, I'm I'm not sure where Brian Leftwich pulled that one out of, but that was a, that, that was pretty creative. Rather than rather than putting the ball right in the you know in the in the in the, in the belly of the um, in the belly of the um, running back and getting stuffed at the line, he got people people in motion and then and, and good job by Godwin to slide at the end to keep the clock rolling. Give him a lot of credit yeah. as far as yeah, there's that a couple goes. far plays of that too, and even the one on Green Bay um, when the guy slid to before the two were in it morning well actually yeah. no it was a mistake i thought the guy made a mistake on yeah, what, what, yeah what was he doing sliding yeah you got to get past <laughs> that two minute warning yeah you got yeah. it run a play if, if you run if you run around and if you're i would have took a deep shot if i was the they, they, they ended up completing a pass for for eight yards on that play um before the two minute warning but i would have i would took a deep shot because you know what if you get a pass interference you know, you could all you get a pass interference. You also could run clock. Um, by the time that play is is run, yes, it's two minute warning, but it's still it's still going to be maybe being one fifty six on the clock, stuff like that. So, um, I thought I thought he did a really good job of mixing it up. The, some of those screen passes, they had one to Godwin on a third and fourteen. That was a really good play. They had one to Gronk. I didn't know where the ball was going on that one. <laughs> the screen pass, the screen yeah, pass that, to that's Gronk. That's a little. Flash of Gronk out of the pass <laughs> yeah. where he's just bowling guys over. That looked like a little um, um what, what's the what's the um, McDaniel's from the Patriots? A little special one for him like that. That, that looked yeah. like one of his. I got one. I want to play out of his book as far as that yeah, goes. Definitely. So, um, Packers Packers um, go on. They did the first team to go to the to go to the Super Bowl playing in their home stadium. So. You know, they get, you know, like maybe this is not a Super Bowl that I think NBC opted out of the Super Bowl and switched it because they had the Olympics. So I, I but this is going to be a pretty, pretty good one. I think our sports ratings have been down for a while, but 
I think um, they're going to have some people in the stands, probably like 30,000, 20, 20 something thousand. So we'll see. They're like 23,000 right now. But I, I mean, allegedly, they only had 13,000 in, in Green Bay yesterday. I don't that know. That looked half full. Yeah, there was not 32 on what they were talking about. I mean, I, I don't know who was counting, but since somebody went to StubHub and got some tickets as, yeah. far, as far as that goes. Um, Brady's legacy now. I mean, listen, I mean, he's, we all know what he is. It, it is amazing that. Him and LeBron and both made the championship ten times. Like that's kind of that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Ten Super Bowls, ten NBA Finals. Um, he, I mean, listen. Which, it just, how much credit really do you have to give the Giants? Oh, and, I think about I think Coughlin. about the, I think about the Giants um, a lot of time, and it's amazing that you give you give credit to the Giants, and then the guy who the other guy who beat him in the in, in the Super Bowl. Doesn't even have a job. Yeah. <laughs> like, what does that say about the Eagles? Like, yeah. they really, and we'll talk about them in a second. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't even have a job. That's crazy. Doug Peterson won yeah. a Super Bowl, and is at three years later because yeah. because he recognized that Carson because Carson Wentz was pretty much doing pretty much doing whatever he wants. Like he's he's doing the whole Jeff George thing. If you don't know, but ask somebody. He he is doing whatever he wants in in Philly. He's changing plays. When they bring over drills, he has like a little middleman in between him and head coach, and he's doing. He's he's saying, "No, nah, I'm not doing that drill." Yeah. I don't feel well, like I mean, that. And, and and you you do have to admit the Eagles are lucky that football games aren't 61 minutes long because the Patriots were marching right down the field to get on them. It, it was whoever which had is crazy, the ball last. which is crazy, which is crazy, which is crazy. That game was that game was nuts. But um, yeah, so. Is what it is as far as far as that goes. But yeah, so listen, greatest of all time. You want to give it to him, give it to him. It doesn't matter to me. This one here was about. This was the this was the one where you know that Montana didn't get when he went to Kansas City. This was this was the one where the great player leaves and wants to go somewhere else, and then you know actually gets to go to the Super Bowl or championship. Not many people get a chance to do that, and he was he was able to do it. So I give him I give him a lot of credit. He did not. It's a hard game for Rodgers to still out because he played better. He just, he I don't just, know if you, uh, I don't, I don't know if you heard what Bradshaw said on the pregame. Um, oh, please! But no, it, it's it's an interesting quote, and it, it it could be pretty accurate. He said Brady is the greatest of all time for the past twenty five years, and you, that's his era of football. And you think about it, like he's the greatest of his generation of this era yeah. of football. You know, because it's all different rules, it's all different generations. I mean, I, I think you have to like, you have to put not it in, take anything away from Brady. Again, yeah, 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 it's, yeah, yeah, it's been yeah, it's yeah. an incredible run, like twenty two years in the league, ten Super Bowls. <laughs> like it just doesn't happen. I mean that, and also, I mean, yeah, think about it too. Is like, I mean, like you couldn't like some of these guys back in the day when you watch. I mean, they you actually could, you could hold. I mean, you could actually defend the receiver in other and and previous yes. errors. That you can do certain things. I mean, you could hit the quarterback. They didn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't. And, and Brady is one of the reasons why the, the quarterback hitting rules changed. Brady and, Man and Manning. Yeah. They got so popular that the league said, the league said we have to have these guys in games. Two and, rules. The, 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 the hits on the quarterbacks and the, the home team getting the balls all season long to get them, to get them game ready instead of, you know, getting them oh, game day. Geez. Yes, yes, yes. So that, that came, was, that came, that came from Manning yeah. and Brady. They yep, lobbied gotta, the NFL for that. Yeah, give me, yeah, you, you gotta give me those on um, football so I can make sure they're all ready to go, right and right, um, and, and inflated the right way and everything. That's what you gotta do. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a documentary coming out to prove it's all wrong. Well, where, where um, Netflix. I think, I think, it, I think it's ESPN has a documentary coming out about Deflate Gate, not ESPN. Uh, one of the sports channels because ESPN was all over to play Kate. Um, premise, premise being that the league premise was... being that it, there was nothing. A, the league was wrong about it, and then and then B, that deflating the balls has nothing to do with improving anything. So, I think the more I think the I think the thing about I think the deflating was deflating was we got it wrong on Spygate, wasn't it really? Wasn't it really like? Wasn't it really that or no? 
Well, that's we'll, we'll call it that that holding call and <laughs> hit the Packer game. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> got to call mean, it one time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what keep that's pushing what, the rules. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, that's what Ernie Adams' job is. That's that's what he does in that building. He doesn't have any other title. He just sits yeah. there and just tries to find that find ways to you know get get, get, get him by. Um, I do I do respect the way. I do not know anything about Campbell. It sounds like this new GM in the with the Lions, basically um, Dan Campbell, Dave Campbell, whatever his name is, um, is that 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 this coach was kind of thrust upon him. That's what it sounds like because it, it seems like there's no relation between the two. I will say this: um, he's interesting. I'll say that. <laughs> yes, I'll say that. Um, but. I give him, I, I, I guess also like he probably, I mean, he's wanted the job regardless of the fact that Matthew Stafford wasn't going to be there. And I think that's something that I give him. I mean, I got I to give him credit for that. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't, you, have, you have to give the GM credit too for letting the, the guys know in the interviews that Stafford's not going to be here next year. Yeah, he's not. And I mean, I think this is a great, if you are going to rebuild, this is the way, this is a great opportunity to do it. Um, hopefully he has a clean bill of health because we know Seth Stafford has gotten hurt a lot, but if you can go ahead and trade Stafford and get some hurt a lot, but there's only one year he didn't play 16 games, but his, the, the, what, the one injury that, um, I was reading, I was reading some of the Detroit papers to the one and he, he barely made it through the season and the injury that he has is a back injury. So that's the only thing that I would, I would be the with. That's the, only, that's the only thing I would say, but yes, you're yeah. right. He plays. I mean, he plays. Yeah. Um, he's he's, ta- he's taking that team to the playoffs. So I, so, I give, so I give him a lot of credit for that. They are the Detroit Lions. And he took them to the playoffs. So yeah. you, you got to keep that. You got to keep that in mind. And but, it looks um, like Indy's going to go full press for him. They have to. I mean, like, you know that Jacoby Brissett is a free agent too. So they have no quarterbacks on the roster. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that's all. I mean, that's it. Just makes sense. I mean, I know uh, McAfee. Yeah, the Phillip, I, I think the Philip Rivers. Came out of nowhere. I don't know about you. I thought he'd get one. I thought he'd play one more year, but I guess yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hold on one second. I got to pull, I want to pull up the the draft order real quick because I want to see where what what they can give, what teams can give in these moments here. Here, I don't want to mock draft. I just want the regular draft uh, draft again. Order. But they also put themselves in a situation of we're trading, so you know that takes some value out of it. It does. It does. Cause, because it, cause it, it's no way, there's no way you're going to keep them. Um, the, the Lions are at have the seventh pick. So the teams who are looking for a quarterback, um, I know, you know, does Denver come in with the ninth pick, but I think they're, but they're, they're not, he needs, he's played 13 years. He probably wants somebody who really is close. It's got, it's, it's got to honestly be like a Tampa Bay. I mean, not, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but in that situation with a good young defense. Um, you mean the one that's and, in the Washington a, football team? Offense, kind of like that one. <laughs> I mean, it seems like that would be the kind of the perfect spot. Like, the, I mean, I, I mean, it's, I would, you have, a, you have a head coach who has cancer. Like, you know, who knows? Like, I mean, he probably doesn't want to try to, I mean, who knows how long he wants to coach and, you know, whatever. Maybe, maybe he has a full, clean bill of health and he's good to go. I don't know. But, um, I think the Washington football team would be the perfect spot for him. And then you look at the context of the division. They won the division at seven and nine. If Matthew Stafford is their quarterback, they win at least 10 games with that defense. I mean, you have Aaron to. Rodgers is their quarterback. Um, yeah, yeah, it may be. I mean, you know, the, I think the, what, that's a, I mean, where do you think Rodgers would go? Do you have See, to trade? I don't, I don't know. Do you have to trade him outside the outside the conference? It's, it's, it's well, maybe outside get, the conference. But you, but you, you think about you think about two quarterbacks from that division who are <laughs> probably won't be there next year, and then you have that one team in the division mm-hmm. who needs a quarterback. And either of those two uh, guys are going to end up in Chicago. Then, then I mean, they're not going to trade him. And it's funny that no, they. I mean, Aaron Rodgers yeah. is not getting traded to Chicago. We know that. Not even Stafford either. Would, would Detroit trade Stafford to Chicago? I mean, if Chicago, I Chicago Maybe has the, like the 20th, 
the 20th pick, they, oh man, that's tough. That's tough. They don't have multiple picks. I mean, you, you're looking for a team with multiple picks would be perfect. Yeah. Um, the Chicago only has the one pick. I mean, could, could Chicago just say, listen, pace and they'd have to, or they'd have to okay it with the management, but, but if you're a pace and you're um, naggy, you say to yourself, you're not going to be there. You don't win next year. You're not going to be there. We next have one year. We have one year anyway. We, we really have one year because if we don't win a Super Bowl or get to a Super Bowl, we won't be back. Do you mortgage the team's future for one season? Uh, his contract is not is not is not terrible. His contract is actually terrible. favorable. Yeah, his contract is not terrible. Of a contract that was when he signed it. Yeah, because because he, he signed the same amount same amount of money for as Carr, and and then both 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 contracts are not terrible. So we'll have to see where they go. I mean, I I, I mean. <sighs> I can't. I mean, I'm looking at. I mean, people bring up the Patriots, but I mean, no, I, I don't think the Patriots are. They're not close to winning. Not with that division right now. What are they gonna do? <laughs> what, what, what are they I gonna mean, do at quarterback it, though? That's it, gonna be that's yeah. interesting. What they're gonna do at quarterback? I mean, this he's he's older now. He's not sitting around for twenty years. You know, waiting for waiting for a guy to develop. It, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting what happens there, but but if I mean if they get their defensive players back next year, um, who, who were they in the out, top? Were they a top fifteen defense anyway? They were top fifteen defense, but where would that defense be if those six guys didn't sit out? Yeah, I know. So yeah, well, you know, you get those back, but you have the offensive weapons. Um, you so, have the picks. Patriots yeah. always have picks. Yeah, some, yeah. Somehow, some way, they always got picks. Yeah, but yeah. if you know, I'm. You know, when, when there were rumors last offseason that Patricia was going to hand off Stafford to the Patriots, you know, at that point, not knowing the season, what it was going to be like, I was all in on Stafford. Um, I would probably do Stafford over Rogers. I, I don't think I think Rogers needs I think Roger I think Rogers is the perfect fit for for actually Chicago. But if you, he's not going to Chicago, I would, I would say Washington. But again, he could come back and haunt the Packers in the playoffs. But I don't think the Packers make the playoffs without Rodgers. I got to – I just – I mean, it's funny because I one of the guys said um, – McAfee was talking about um, one of his guys who works on the show was a Packer fan. And he said that the thing that bothered him the most about the pick of Jordan Love was it was the one pick that was going to piss off Aaron Rodgers. They could, have picked the, they could have picked anybody and it would, it would have been fine. Yeah. But it was the one pick that was like, damn, you're going to piss this dude off for a guy who is quite, it's so, the talent is so Utah state. <laughs> He's very questionable conference. Yeah. Did not have a good year. Um, his, his last year there. Oh man. That's just, that's crazy. That's crazy. What if, what if urban says, yo, I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be here that long. I'll probably be here for three years at most with my health. I'll give you the number one pick, Green Bay, for Aaron Rodgers. That's that's interesting, especially with Deshaun. <laughs> well, not Deshaun saying it himself, but coming out that the Jets are his number one destination than Miami. So I think Deshaun plays a lot into where I think he's the the lead domino for everything to fall into place. Do you think that that whole – you think he's been in talk with people like, you know, Gar, not Garnett, um, Durant, people like that, and saying, hey, you know – Apparently, Dur he's – he's everyone thought it was Harden, but he's really good friends with with Kevin Durant. Which is not – that doesn't bode well. Yeah. That doesn't so, bode well for being – well. Yeah, well, at least he's not friends with Kyrie Irving. <laughs> well, he's obviously not because he, he actually comes to work every day. So, yeah, so, yeah. Day, so yeah, yeah. The, the the I think Watson's the 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 domino that we need to to see fall. Right. That's now. the first. That's the first one I think. And I mean, and somebody. I mean, listen. I mean, I think it's going to be. I I don't know what to. I don't know what to tell anybody with that job. I mean, you have to have a real. They don't have any picks, like you know. So I mean, so they're almost if they're. I mean, oh, that's a lot of pressure to put on a young quarterback too. I mean, young yeah. quarterback. You, I mean, when, it's not you. You're not, you're not replacing a, a guy who's so so. 
you're replacing a guy who's a arguably a top five quarterback right now in, in, in Watson. That's tough. Well, that, that's how you. That, I mean, that's how the Jets have to look at it with that pick. It's like, are we going to get a better quarterback in number two than Deshaun Watson? No, no, you're no, not. You're, not. you're not. You're not. I mean, just if you're the Jets, like if, if you're, especially if you're, um, if you're Robert Sala, like, and, and and kudos to him because I guess I guess the word was he only wanted he wanted that job or nothing else. Yeah, so that was so, it. That's yeah, correct. that was it. So he'd have been back in San Francisco if, if, if the Jets didn't offer that job. Just go take it. I mean, go for it. Like, like I mean, like I, I, I know we have to wait for the, the whole the whole league year to start, but just go after it. Like, what's the what's the, like this? Don't don't play games. Don't don't fiddle. Like, just go get the best. You're gonna have a top. When was the last time the Jets had a top five quarterback? Those guys come along once in a generation, and he's 26 years old. Like, go get it. I mean, with Joe Namath. Go get it. Go get it. Just go Maybe, get it. You know, Ken O'Brien had some years where he was near the top of the league. And people – and, and, and free agent um, quarterbacks, uh, free agent um, wide receivers, um, skill position players. I mean, you you you, you, you do what you – you already drafted Makai Becton last year at tackle. I mean, you show up the offensive line. I mean, re- people are going to want to come there. And and you're running the Shanahan offense. It's very quarterback friendly. With, yeah. a, mobile, with a mobile quarterback, go do it. Go do it. Yeah. It's all sense in the world. Um, let's see here. There's one job. Le- somebody got hired. That was uh, who's 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 the last guy to get hired? I'm gonna think who else oh. the coaching. Somebody got somebody hired the 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 offensive coordinator for the for the Chargers as their head coach. Oh, who was that? It wasn't the Falcons, right? It wasn't the Falcons. Wasn't the Falcons the list of NFL head coaches? I'm trying to think where that guy is. It's, I can never pronounce his name because Houston is the only team without a, without a head coach. We don't. Yeah, I know Houston is a. If I see, it's one of those names that if I once I see it, I'm like, oh, I remember that name. I just gotta see it. Um, let's see here. I can't. It's not pulling up for me right now. Can't find it. Who had oh. coaching vacancies? Who had coaching So coaching vacancies were the Jets, the Jets, the Chargers, the Jags, the Eagles. Oh, the Eagles. Was it the Eagles? Eagles? The Eagles, the Lions, and the Falcons. The only job that that's, that's not full right now would be the Texans. Yeah, so it was the Eagles who hired. Eagles, okay, Eagles. Yeah, so the Eagles hired the offensive coordinator for the for the Colts. That's who. That's who they got hired. So see what happens there. Um, and the Anthony Lynn going to Detroit was kind of surprising. Well, and, well, I, I'll say this about his staff: Anthony Lynn, right, former head coach. Deuce Staley is going to be the assistant coach. Um, we, you, you know, we're getting old because I think I believe Aaron Glenn is the defensive coordinator. If you remember Aaron Glenn from Aaron Glenn court. was a hell of a football player. <laughs> he really was a good player. He was an all-time great Jack. And, and and good good for him staying in football and being being a coach too. I, I love that. I love to see that. So um so yeah he was um so 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 he he gave a pretty a pretty a nice veteran staff as well. Um, also I, I think this is the first it's the first Super Bowl where all the coordinators are African American for the for the for the Buccaneers as far as special teams. Special teams, yes. um, offense, and defense. So, um, so, so if you're looking for that, as you have that as well, and I just think that we're looking. Well, what at about the, what about the? Uh, I was gonna say the Rockets, the Texans interviewing McCown for the head coaching position. Is he now on you the know Rock- why Deshaun wants to be traded? He's is a he, backup is he, quarterback on the Cowboys. Isn't he on the roster? Talk about, but like, but the, but see, it's not. It's it's that point too. But it's also to the point where, like, if you were a young, and I don't and listen, I, I don't, I, I don't love bringing race and everything, but like, if you were a young person of color who was who has been in the league for like five, ten years, like chopping at the bit for an opportunity just to get an interview, and Josh McCown gets one, like that's that's hard. That's hard. At least Campbell was in the league for a long time, yeah. and and had experience as a, as an interim coach at some point. Like you know what I'm saying. So you could you could see like a little bit of the resume. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying, and you in, in, in the coaching circles, people probably know him, but like to see to see him get a, I mean, how does he get an opportunity at all? Yeah, crazy. Like how? 
Like, <laughs> what the? No f- wonder people want to leave that organization. Oh my god! And and, and, and I guess I guess Leslie Frazier is getting hired. I mean, I really think. I mean, this is a job where, you know, Marvin would have to come in and save it. I mean, I, I, I think it's a Marvin Lewis job, but they, but but they won't hire him probably. But Marvin Lewis would come in there and just. He would sit there and say, "Hey, I'll do what I did. In, I do. I'll do what I did in Cincinnati and, and get you guys to be a winner. Because yeah. right now, because right now you're not at all, in any way whatsoever. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, let's roll over um, to the head coaches. Um, the whole wins thing. We we talked. We, I, think, I think we can kind of talk about that a little bit already. But um, I want to talk about this whole thing with. Um, I, I forgot to put it in the rundown, but the the whole Durant versus all old players like what is i mean like this did did you see the thing with him and Shaq? like yeah it's like i don't wonder i'm not sure what like the whole listen if you are durant okay number one you had to go to a you you had you went to the finals with your own squad you couldn't get you you didn't win it going to the finals is is fine whatever whatever he has like this kind of weird surly attitude whatever and then when you come at Shaq, like, say what you want about Shaquille O'Neal, size, whatever, whatever, and, and, and maybe who knows. But, like, at the end of the day, he's an all-time great. He was – he did some great things in the NBA Finals. He went, how, how many rings does Shaq have? Five? Four? He has four, I think. Four. four he has four. You know, yeah, yeah, he has four because because Kobe made a point to make sure he won one, one more than Shaq. Yeah. Um, so – I mean, the guy has four rings. I mean, he was a he was a centerpiece of those teams. It wasn't like he was, you know, playing with he played with Kobe. But I mean, what they did, what they did in what they did in Golden State is the equivalent of like Kobe and Shaq playing with like I don't know, like some another great player. <laughs> I mean, they didn't, they didn't have another great player on the team. It was all yeah. role players as far as far as that goes. So, um, what are your thoughts about this whole thing with uh, Durant going after? This, I mean, like even the interviews are just like this. His hats, like his his, his hoodies over his eyes. Yeah, like like this, you know, this it's, is kind of it's when Greg when Greg Popovich does it. You know, it's tongue in cheek. I, I think the disrespect that the, these guys are showing to to not only Shaq but to, to Charles Barkley. I mean that that's one of the best post game shows in all of sports. Is is what they do at TNT. Um, they have a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I just I don't think players, these young players, like being called out after being coddled for so many years. Hey, yeah, you um, basketball. Being told you're great, you're great. Yep. You know, yeah. And, and now you you have you know uh, you have a dream teamer, and you have you know a, a, an all time top five NBA center, maybe top ten NBA center, depending on, on what generation you watch. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just giving them a hard time and, and calling these guys out. You know, Barkley has always been up front and, and told the truth. Barkley doesn't hold back. No. He didn't hold back on himself as a player. No. Didn't hold back on teammates as a player. No. You know, he recognizes the circus that is Kyrie Irving. And, and it, it makes you wonder because that's where it all started. It started when they got on Kyrie Irving. Yep. Like, what, what kind of pull does Kyrie Irving have in the league that so many players stick up for him like this? I think it's... Is it that younger generation of players? That it's are, are just... it's it's a it's, it's a it's just really a bad club. I mean, is it really it's a bad? I mean, I, I don't I don't get it. Like, I mean, like, how do you justify what he does? Like, I mean, like off the field, off the field, yes, no doubt about it. Like, I think what he does off the field is amazing. Like, I mean, yes, he's 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 done a lot of really cool things as far as charity wise and oh and, yeah, and supporting stuff like that. But I mean, I was watching the game, his first game back, and he just looked like just looks sad like he just doesn't want to be there yeah and i've and we talked about it too just because somebody's good at something does not mean like they they love it like you know i mean i I don't know if he loves 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 a bit loves the game and and i I do i do think i do think that rumor is true to that rumor where he his hiatus is because he was they were thinking about trading him to houston and he just said you know what i'm gonna go awol and you can't trade me to houston yeah, <laughs> you can't change you me Houston. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're Houston, why not do that? I mean, the draft picks, like everybody, people going crazy about draft picks. Like, come on, like draft I mean, picks are so hit or miss. I mean, and, and I mean, in football, you draft picks are in in is so valuable. 
the rookie contracts are huge. Well, you have a hundred men on your roster at one point. Exactly. So I mean, and, and, and that other league, come on, you, you you can't, you can't, you can't. Um, let's see here, Marvel. What's going on with this? With this? This like this? This show? Like it was a lot of hype about Wandavision. I did not know what to expect. I did like the little I Love Lucy kind of episode in episode one, but as I go through it. And like the little things that they're dropping in every episode, yeah, I just it's so good. This is gonna win. It's this is so, this is this is gonna win an Emmy. It's uh, really good. It's really really good. And the way it ended in part three, in case yes. you haven't seen it, we're not gonna we're not gonna ruin it. But that is right there. The whole, the I think that's the whole opening of, of where Phase Four is going. I think yeah. it's it's everything. You know, and I was thinking about it. You know, when I when I brought this up, it's like it's nine episodes um half hour an episode just just under a half hour so it's basically a four and a half hour movie which if they did this as a movie it would have had to have been two movies kind of like yeah you know and and if you're not a marvel fan those those first three shows you know may have you'd watch it for the nostalgia not looking for the easter eggs but this this show is just going to be wherever this is going in phase four and it's it's funny because they're they they're they're talking. They haven't done it yet about pushing back um, Black Widow. Black Widow has nothing to do with Phase Four because all the other movies seem to be going for their target date. So it, it's you know, and the names that are, are are appearing anonymously just open up so much for Marvel. You know, um, it's it's actually if you go to Google, if you if you search Wandavision on Google, and you look at the cast. They have Evan Michael Peters listed, and who's Evan Michael Peters? He was Quicksilver in the X Men mm-hmm. universe, the Sony yeah. X Men. So you know, if he's going to come here as Quicksilver Pietro, um, it just opens up that whole multiverse that yeah. they're talking about. You know, with Spider Man three and whatnot, and and then just the rumors of you know if it is Mephisto, um, who's going to play him and. You know, there's a lot of talk that it's going to be Al Pacino, which would be incredible if it's Al Pacino. It's just, I mean, it's so, I just, I'm watching it, I'm, I'm, I'm going through it, and I think, like, the part that was, like, weird to me is when the there was a scene where the guy comes out of the... The, the sewer, the beekeeper the guy. The sewer, the beekeeper, it is a beekeeper. And she just says no, and then go back, it goes back. Or, like, when it, when it, when it randomly rewinds or cuts... Or does a jump cut, and yeah. it's just—it's just like it's—it's—it's. It's, it's, I mean, is it? You don't know if it's like—is she trying to live? Is in she a, controlling? Is someone else she, controlling? Is she her controlling it? Stuff. Is someone controlling her? Is, does she want? Is she trying to? Is, does she put him and her, her and Vision in this world to protect them, so nobody could find them, like stuff yeah. like that? It was just like you know, like you know, when the when the girl comes over and says your brother got killed, what are you talking about, brother? I mean, just like what did yeah. you just say? Like well, she said, Ultron. I like got goosebumps. Yeah, yeah I know. I was actually, and I love it because like even like a lot of the obviously it's well done. It's Disney. They got a lot of money, um, but I think the thing that people like about it too is like I mean, when I see kids kind of like the little things they did going from black and white to the standard standard definition to yeah. the to the standard form with the with the bars with the bars um that we're used yeah. to seeing in HD films as well too so that was kind of that was kind of cool and um the way the way the way the way they did that as well so i mean it's it's yeah. just been then, really good and the neighbor is actually Monica Rambeau who the last time we saw her was the young daughter in Captain Marvel who eventually takes over the 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 Captain Marvel torch at some point and becomes a second captain marvel so that's that's interesting too like wow that's just going to open up the, the next captain marvel movie yeah i mean i mean i think they i was i don't know they gotta do they gotta do something to get me excited about captain marvel i wasn't really i mean she's nice she's good in the nissan commercials i just can't i <laughs> I, just, I, I enjoyed captain marvel i'm sorry yeah, yeah, yeah. i enjoyed I thought, it i didn't i don't i i enjoyed it I, th- I thought she I didn't hate it. I just thought I just I just I kind of I, w- I wish it was like I guess they couldn't have brought her brought her in earlier. They couldn't have right. It, it, no. it was, no, they couldn't. They, they brought in. No. They brought in. They, they, they had to bring in. The, the the focus was the original Avengers. Yeah, and so that's how yeah. they had to bring her in. Had but bring her but her in, it yeah. just it you know it's 
I, I, you know, I enjoy the movie. I think it's a good movie. But I, yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited where this is going now. And after like not having Marvel movies, I'm not having movies. A period. Year, yeah, a year and a half without Marvel, a new Marvel movie. This is just. Do you Marvel. feel like okay? Let's just say September comes and we're not at full capacity, but we can go like 60%, 70% in certain places, as including movie theaters. Um, do you feel like people are gonna maybe throw Coming to America or Wonder Woman back in the theaters or stuff like that? Are they, are they, are they gonna just keep, cause I know Coming to America is on Amazon. Coming to America too is on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Uh, um, it, well, I mean, Wonder Woman technically was in the theaters. You had oh, the yeah, choice yeah, of yeah, seeing yeah, that's it true. in HBO. That's the, yes, HBO, yeah, that's true. And there, there's been no official numbers as to where more people saw, but I'm gonna I'm gonna guess HBO Max. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I if I if I have to go see Marvel movies in the theater, you know, I would I would probably do it because I, I just love the movies that much and, and enjoy it. I don't think it's just I mean ever since, ever since ever since being a kid, I, my father used to my father used to take us to the movies all the time, and we and we yeah. loved it and we loved it and we loved it yeah. and we loved it. Have you have you you've heard of this Bridgerton thing, right, Bridgerton? Yes, I've heard of it. Okay, you have not seen it, right? I have not seen it. I had a discussion with someone about it the other day yes. um, at lunch. I had no desire was, to see it. I was out with my friend Christina, and she was <laughs> yeah. talking about it. Yeah. And apparently, the women love this. This pretty yes, <laughs> I have not seen it. You sounded like Larry David when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the women love it. Apparently, they love it. <laughs> but um, um, I did see the Light Stalker on, oh, and that wow. was so good. That is terrifying, dude. That dude is terrifying. And, and, and then I, that was terrifying, dude. I, I nothing scares me more than the police sketch, and, and it looks like everybody. It was it was it was a really good really good documentary, and very yeah. and actually very moving when it's when you when they talk about the the main investigator and how it impacted his life. And oh, both of them. From. Yeah, so both of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so it's just yeah, good job. And, and imagine like, you know, it's true life. So I'm not really spoiling anything. But the fact of the matter is a neighborhood got together and held him at bay until the cops got there. Yeah. And, and helped the cops or, you know, like just, I mean, that's what, 25 years ago, 35 years ago, 85, That's I'm sorry. Crazy. It's it's just like the whole neighborhood was just so excited that they helped the police catch them. Just such a different time and such craziness and such a tight-knit community over there because they were all pissed when they, you know, and a lot of it was because he, how he represented, you know, once they realized he was, he was Hispanic and, and represented their community. The thing about it is... Um... Nowadays, that wouldn't even happen. Like, they, they, they would, no, would, you would protect the guy. <laughs> I mean, they would. I don't think yeah. it would even happen. They, 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 they'd probably ask him if he was a Republican or Democrat before they. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd you vote for? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like. Well, I was like, telling someone it, it works. It'd be, it'd be partisan. It'd be ridiculous. You know, I, I in '85, I was. It was my second year. My first, yeah, my, it was my second year out of high school. And um, I remember that that like hundred and twenty day period when he was doing what he was doing in L.A. It was it was on the news, and you know, yeah, we had CNN back then, and I think that was I think that's all we had was CNN. Yeah, so anyway, that's all we had. Cable news in eighty five, yeah. and um, you know, but it was on the regular nighttime news with with Dan Rather reporting. Scary, it, you know. So and then and then eight years prior, as an eleven year old. Um, I, I lived through the summer of Sam with that being all over the, the New York newspapers and on the news all the time. Which so, is one of, uh, which is, which is, which is they, they, I don't know if they, I don't know if people will ever talk about it, but like that is one of Spike Lee's most, it's most it was a great film. Yes. I, I thought, and Adrian Brody was just is so good in that movie. Yeah. I mean, that movie. Didn't that, I, I, didn't that come out though? I, I think that came out either just before or after 9-11 and just disappeared and like everything that came out and that said yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably came out and I time. think it just disappeared yeah. I, I, I might be dating it wrong but that movie didn't get the acclaim that it deserved it didn't no I, I thought I thought it was just like that movie was so good I couldn't even I'm always and I know I'm a fan of Spike Lee but like if he makes a dud I'll, I'll, I'll call it out um but yeah but that one was just really good I could I, it, very very few movies move me enough to watch to watch it twice 
and 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 I said I seen that movie. I seen that movie like three times. It's it's, it's, it's really good. As yeah, far, as far I have as three goes. times on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah good movie. Um, yeah, man, good to good to see you, man. Good seeing you. <laughs> I got the whole setup finally falling you into the, place. You got, the, here, you, got the, so. you got the you got the you got the Fenway hat on. I see you with the Golden State trying to take over, to take over Steve Kerr. Yeah, uh, all that stuff like that. I see. I see, I see you out here. Yeah. Five dollars on Amazon. Can't which one? Lo- which one? Uh, me, the the Golden State. The Golden State, really? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's, that's it's, nice. It's, it's a nice this, nice workout shirt. This nice one I got. I got. I got this one for Christmas. I'm loving. I'm loving this one. This is like the CC Bathia collection thing. Gotcha. They got going on. So they have like Jack Johnson. They have a bunch of different people on that one. Um, this show, just so people know, um, this show is changing a little bit. Still talking sports, but the sport, the main sport after the Super Bowl is going to be baseball. So we're going to do a whole thing on Henry Aaron. We're going to do a whole thing on, you know, some of these yeah, trades. I forgot Hank. Yeah. Don Sutton. We lost a lot this year. Phil Hebrew. Yes. They lost the um, Tommy Lasorda. Yeah, <laughs> Tommy Lasorda. So we have some people who cover Tommy Lasorda um, in, in, in his career. I actually bumped into Tommy Lasorda when I was doing my internship at CNN Sports Illustrated, um, and I, it was just had. And, and I basically sat down, and and he it was nowhere else to sit. He sits down across a diagonal from me, looks right at me, and says, "Hey, I'm Tommy Lasorda." I'm like, "Yeah, like I have no idea." Like, 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 like <laughs> that's what you know. Somebody is a good dude. Like you know, what I'm saying like they introduce themselves at, at, and they know they 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 know. I mean, they, I have my little Giants hat on. He knows who I. He knows that I know who he is. Yeah. And he said we had a great conversation about baseball. I love stuff like that. Honestly, but, some of the, some of the videos, and I I had posted some um, of him with umpires, like especially during <laughs> the '77 and '78 World Series. Um, he has one of the all time great post game press conferences. Um, after someone hit two home runs, who's not a normal home run hitter, um, just just a, a great personality, yeah. um, an, an ambassador for for baseball and the Dodgers. Um, it's just a, a tough loss, a lot of tough losses in, in baseball. I think baseball took the hardest um, of all the sports over the last year with with who we lost in baseball. Yeah, it was really really tough. But yeah, like I said, I'll be uh, we'll be doing this. Whole thing gonna be the put on waivers podcast will be a baseball show right after the Super Bowl. So, but until then, you got to get Jay Daniel back at some point. Yeah, oh, we get Jay. Daniel. Oh, we definitely, we'll definitely get Jay on there. Uh, I, I mean, oh, for, for the first, 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 I'll, I'll put that in first show. We'll get him. We'll get him on talking, talking baseball, talking little Phillies, and all that stuff like that. He does. So, all right, James. Yeah, and I will, next week is uh mock draft week. <laughs> mock draft. I do my mock draft stuff with on the on the put on with his football show. I'll be doing we'll be doing yeah. mock draft. Have fun with that. James we'll do the uh, we, did, we did we did we need a between Super Bowl show for next week. So we'll, we'll yeah, come so up we'll, with something for you. We'll come, we'll come up with something good for you guys. Um maybe 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 we'll, maybe we'll talk about some of the, you know the Brady's finest moments in the Super Bowl. That might be something to choose from. I mean, All nine right now. Yeah. I mean they, listen, I'll say one thing. I can't lie. They've all were great games. <laughs> like, like every time the Patriots oh, are in exactly. a Super Bowl, every time the Pats are in a Super Bowl, it's always a great game. Maybe the Philly game, exactly. but, but even the Philly game had well, we'll, Terrell we'll, we'll Owens. The, we'll take away the Green Bay and, and Chicago Super Bowl of, of 90s, you know, 95 and 85. But mm-hmm. other than that, they've all been really close. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> they've been great games. So I have so no problem looking back at that. All right, James, you have a great day. Take care. You too. Thank you.